Hello, and welcome to another episode of my Coffee Break Art Classes. If you were in the US in the 1960s, you would have been familiar with supermarkets piled high with cardboard boxes, and one of these piles would have been Brillo pads. But this is not one of these. In 1964, Andy Warhol, assisted by Gerald Malanga and Billy Lynch, painted and silkscreen boxes carefully made using plywood with different consumer products, uh, Kellogg's cornflakes, Brillo soap pads, Mott's apple juice, Del Monte peaches and uh, Heinz ketchup. The finished items were indistinguishable from their cardboard supermarket counterparts. Warhol exhibited these at the stable gallery, cramming the space with stacked boxes that record a cramped grocery warehouse. He invited collectors to buy them, and though they didn't sell well, the boxes caused controversy. And uh, in 1970, he actually made another 100 Brillo boxes for the Pacin Art Museum. One person who purchased one in 1969 paid £1,000 and uh, his daughter remembers from her childhood that her father enclosed the sculpture in plexiglass. Her family basically used it as a coffee table. However, it was traded shortly after for another piece of art, but this same Brillo box recently sold for $3 million. The critics at the time were scathing. They didn't like the commercial subject, the blank, machine-made look of the boxes, which contrasted sharply with the gestural brushstrokes of the abstract, expressionist paintings <clears throat> that they were used to. How they've changed their tune today, such is the fickleness of the art critic. We look at them today with the benefit of hindsight, and appreciation of artworks that we've seen in the intervening time, especially with the Turner Prizes, some of which have impressed us and some perhaps have not. We have also had to take into account the massive number of Billa Box fakes that have also been produced. So now's the time to look at how it affects us. You will get very few clues if you look through the internet. There is little observation by experts about the boxes, apart from the price. It's as if the work of art has a profound effect on us, but we just can't put it into words. Firstly, it's not an original design or colour. The guy who initially set the cardboard box printing press did that. Secondly, there's no uniqueness, no single piece of art. Warhol made hundreds of these and copied many other package boxes. Thirdly, there are no artistic skills employed. Not only did Warhol do little of the actual work involved, but they were machine-made boxes and in the main screen printed. Looks like a cardboard box, but it isn't a cardboard box. No material value, but today worth about three million dollars each. I looked at one <clears throat> in the London Gallery a few months ago and decided that it was, in my opinion, the most impressive work of art I had seen. It raises questions about everything we think about art. Not only how we value it, but what art actually is. The, que the answer to the question, what is art, suddenly seems to become more difficult. And with that, I will let you ponder. Thank you for watching this Coffee Break art class. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a comment and uh, click the subscribe button. See you next time.